All right. Welcome, everyone, to the weekly community call on January 5th for chaos. Happy New Year. I hope everyone is doing very well or at least getting by and feeling okay. I think that's the baseline is like, just let's try to be just okay. That's all I'm, I'm shooting for personally, because okay is better than 2020. And how's it, um, how's it go? How's the okay going for you? It's what, January okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> all right, so far. We'll see by the end of Friday how things are. Might not be okay, but fingers crossed. Anywho, uh, do we want to go around and just see how everybody's doing? I thought that was nice. We did that in an earlier meeting. That was kind of nice. So um, just like 30 seconds, just tell us how you're, how you're doing. Is that cool? Do we want to do that? Okay, good, because we're doing that. I'm going to start with Matt Snell, since you're like in my top left of my Brady Bunch screen. So go for it. So just how we're doing and what we're doing? Yes. Sorry. We can stop recording this too. Should we maybe pause? Yeah, let's pause uh, that. There we go. Okay, we're back. Um, we do have a couple of things on the agenda. They seem like they might be, well, one of them anyway, is a big discussion. So I don't know if today is really the day and Venu's not here as well. So um, the first item we had dropped on here uh, as kind of a, a holdover from December, um, there's a, a, a thread going on about moving to GitLab um, for uh, mostly because Grimoire Lab is, is struggling with the um, closure of Travis CI. So is this something we want to talk about today or do we want to wait and bring it up once we're a little more kind of in the groove? What do we think? I'll just put my little bit in and that if anyone wants to bring it over to our stuff, we will help you out as much as we can and support in all the ways we can because of the fact that you know we have our own instantiation of GitLab and we've got various um, different versions of it and have all of that together and ready. So um, I actually made the same offer to Intersource Commons as well, um, where I told them if they wanted to move off of GitHub over to GitLab to support all of these different things, they can come on over. So, you know, if you want the freebies, got the freebies. Do you want to drop that comment in the issue just sure. as like a point of reference for future and for those who aren't here? I, I know, I, I don't think I was part of the original conversation. I think I came in um, to chaos right as, as it was kind of wrapping up last year or over the summer. But um, I, I know that it was a long and drawn out conversation for what I understand. So it's not obviously something that we can just decide today or or, um, you know, bring any closure to, but um, I didn't know if people had other thoughts about, since the since the, the situation has kind of changed with, with Travis CI, um, and, and, you know, I don't know what our thoughts are on all of chaos being on the same platform, or if it's okay to kind of let the software pieces go there, what works best for them, or, or how we want to approach that, but. What exactly is the Travis CI issue? Well, I went to a paid model. Then initially they stopped working entirely. <clears throat> yes. And so I think they were trying to, Venu was trying to um, migrate a lot to GitHub Actions, but I don't think he was having much luck um, or, and or it's a, just a lot of work um, for them to do that. So I think that was the issue mostly. I mean, do, is it cost prohibitive? Because I mean, we do have money and we can spend, and we spend the money on things like this to make sure the community continues to function. Well, I, I don't know how much it is, but. It's not cost prohibitive. Um, I've, I've started paying it for Augur because it's too expensive to not do that. Yeah, I think okay. like Georg and other people that were actively looking at the migration, I guess aren't on the call today, right? And I think one of the reasons we didn't do it was that I think Augur was going to have to basically, I don't know, do spend six months re rewriting yeah. things. To, yeah, if I mean, we wanted to that's why we're paying for Travis CI. I thought, yeah. You are correct, John. That's what I remember as well. Yeah. So 
some ways I feel like I should abstain from this conversation since I work at GitLab, but um, we do have an open source program where open source you know, projects can apply for um, free GitLab gold, which is like the premium tier. And that would include um, lots of CI minutes. And then you could use those minutes on a GitHub um, repo. So you wouldn't need to migrate everything to, to GitLab in that case, you could just use our CI. So that could be another alternative. Although you know, as a GitLab team member, um, I would love to see, you know, as many open source projects as we can get using GitLab. Um, but that as a kind of smaller first iteration, you could just look at using GitLab CI on the existing uh, projects as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I was in the same position like three months ago because I had sort of recused myself from the discussion. Uh, but I think like Matt Snell or others you might know, it's like Georg's not here. The project may have already applied for the free license, like if I'm not mistaken, but, um, and then they talked to like Nirutsi about this, like even back during like scale um, so I think that motion is already in place, uh, but I think we sort of put a stop to this in September timeframe because we didn't realize how much work like Sean had to do from the auger side of things for the migration. But like Matt, do you know if he, like the project got a free license from GitLab or not? But I'm actually not too cued in on this um, discussion. Okay. Uh, All right. Sorry. On? Yeah. Maybe I'm like, not remembering correctly, but I can, can ask you. Find yeah. that out on my end too. Yeah, that'd be helpful. If you could find that out. I mean, personally, I find myself strangely torn all over the place in this discussion, and without rehashing things. So, like, making sure that the software can function to the best of their ability is important for me. And we do have two different pieces of software. Um, and I hate to provide any, like, or like, uh, have any limits on the work that the software teams do. That just kind of bums me out if they're feeling like they're being inhibited in any way. Um, there's also the argument about having uh, all of our work on a single location. I totally get that as well and not being distributed. So I, I don't find myself landing in a very simple solution in this case, it was <laughs> kind of like a so-so uh, on, on both ends. But and I, I'm guessing as we have this discussion again, I'm going to be in the exact same spot that there's no perfect solution. And I don't know. And, and I know that we talked about this for a long time <laughs> last yeah, time to did. the point where I think we finally just had to say enough. Uh, if I recall, there was like one meeting where we we're just like done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, the end of it. The cost perspective was for, for Augur was significant. Um, but not monetary cost. It was the amount of people's time, time. Gonna yeah, be required well, for the yeah. migration. So just to get back at John's offer of free stuff, that, that wasn't actually the issue. It was the issue of the, the time that it would take to migrate. And given that these projects don't have a lot of engineers on them at the at, at the start and then to take a couple of people off for six months to do the migration, I think was what stopped us last time. Okay, so um, how do we wanna go forward? Just encourage people to drop their comments in on the issue. Um, do we need to, I mean, I would personally prefer to wait until like Venu or Georg or someone with a little bit more vested interest in you know, the actual work that has to happen to be part of the conversation. So I don't know if it means we have a separate meeting altogether about it and just Georg try to knock it out. Is there a GitLab, per, I mean, I'm not GitLab, a bit Turgia person or a Grimoire Lab person that can speak or is it we, we need Georg for that? Yeah, we would need somebody, I think that's kind of. So, so I don't know if I'm talking out of turn um, but I am trying to get a contract together so that Baturgia can come and do this stuff on our platform. So this might end up working out well in that regard if I do pay for the things. Um, <clears throat> but it's not happening yet, but it's on, it is on my roadmap for things that I want to get done this year um, and hopefully actually this quarter. So um, uh, that, that might help in that you know we may be able to pay for some of that being done. 
um, if it is if it is primarily the grimoire lab aspects of it, because the fact that we do want to have grimoire labs on our platform and we do want it to be available for all of our people. So that might be something that helps if that's the concern. Um, I don't know as much about the Travis CI portions or the auger, obviously, because I'm not working on I'm not working with any of those, but FYI. <clears throat> So one of the things that I guess I'm super attentive to here is obviously Grimoire Lab is connected, as you brought up to Lona, to Baturgia. And Baturgia is a, they're a, an organization that's um, that's in the business of, of helping people understand more about their communities. And if, if the main piece of software being Grimoire Lab, if the work on that software is being inhibited in any way by that platform, I fully understand and respect <laughs> that, that pain. And I, I mean, if so, so I, th I think we have to consider that as well, that, or in some form or fashion, I don't, maybe, maybe somebody can help me out here, but there, there's a connection here. And if, if they're feeling that that's getting in, being on the GitHub platform is getting in the way that they can effectively do their work. Um, and we also want Grimoire Lab to be part of the chaos community. I'm just thinking out loud here. I mean, I think these are all the things you have to think about. I think we should table this discussion until we have um, somebody from that team on, on the call. Okay. I feel like we're making an awful lot of speculation and an awful Maybe. lot of yeah. assumptions. Yeah. Um, and I would rather just have them on the call and have them talk about what they're, what they're doing and what their pain points are. Fair. Okay, I like that idea as well. So let's do that. And then um, maybe I'll just email uh, Venu and just uh, maybe invite him to the meeting next week or in the future, like kind of like let us know when you're going to be available to talk about this and then we can, we can approach it then. Cool. All right. Let's move on then to the next item on the agenda, which is the website migration update. The update is things are going well. That's it. End of update. <laughs> we, we are making what, progress. What is the update? Uh, just out of curiosity. <laughs> it's just general updates. Just general no, updatedness. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're moving off of the Linux Foundation hosted WordPress, and we're going to move to our own WordPress. It's mostly just because the tools that we need in WordPress, they're a little um, complicated to get access to sometimes via the LF. And so we just want a little bit more control. Totally makes sense. Yeah. And if anyone is interested in um, participating in those conversations, they usually happen during the web content meetings, which are once a month. Um, so you can just look at the chaos calendar. I think we just had the first one of 2021 yesterday. So um, whenever the February would be beginning of February. Um, okay. Anything else to add? No, I don't think so. Um, the next item I put on here was um, just in case um, Shoya or King were going to be here, I just was hoping to get more of a recap on the Shanghai meetup that happened on December 27th. Um, you can see that I, I know that uh, King posted an a update to the mailing list, but I just wanted to kind of hear it from them. Um, and there was the, the final kind of um, the final page on our website that had all the information about it. So if we do these in the future, that's kind of what they will look like. And they'll go under the community section of the website, um, not under the Chaos Con official, because um, these are a little bit more informal. Um, but it seemed to go off well. They had, I think they said 50 plus people there, about 50 people there. So um, it was great. Um, if you're not on the mailing list uh, and you would like to see pictures of it, I'm sure it's in the archive because he did a really nice little write up King did so anybody have any comments about it or questions or anything like that for those who just joined I'll put the agenda right there if you want to add yourselves to the meeting minutes and we hope that you're doing well we did go around and do a quick status update on everyone but that's okay we'll we'll, we'll keep going um, what else? I guess that's it. Oh my gosh. Are we at the end of the agenda already? Wow. 
What else do we have to talk about? Who wants to bring something up? Share anything they're working on, Sophia? Sorry, Elizabeth. I was discussing with one uh, student from India. I think she she's interested in participating in one of these pro mentoring programs she wants to contribute. So I asked her if she could join the mailing list and get in touch with you. So at least she should start from the community level, then we see how the projects or the, the working group that she's most interested with, at least to get familiar before the opening dates of things. So it might be if you have not received any uh, communication from how might be in a few days or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I personally have not received anything from her yet, but I will keep my eyes okay. open. Thank so. you, that's awesome. I think that's a fantastic approach to kind of easing into the cast community because there is a lot. So yeah. um, that's, that's a really good idea of just kind of um, getting a good feel for what there is available before the is she do you know if she wants to do go through outreachy or google summer of code or well, i else? met her on the google summer of code uh slack channel because you have the common channel for both the mentor and mentee so i think she she was uh, like throwing uh, sending some informations a random asking for questions and help so she she sent a private message to me so at the cost we re of replying her, we I pointed her about Kios and other projects that she might be interested. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for being our advocate. Our well, we are also doing it for the country. <laughs> our evangelist. <laughs> Yay. Does anyone else have anything they want to chat about or bring up? Ideas for 2021, concerns? Something I think else? we might want to put a uh, Google Summer of Code on the radar. Just because when do they thinking. open that? Soon. <laughs> I should go and find that soon, but I don't actually know when it is. But I can check for you. <laughs> Case in that point, would be awesome. We should put it on the radar. <laughs> Are we doing anything with FOSDEM this year? I know there isn't a chaos con, but is there going to be any sort of chaos presence at, at FOSDEM? Um, I'm sure participants of chaos will go there. I don't know. I, I didn't submit anything. I'm sorry, Matt. No, you're good. I haven't seen anything listed. I'm going to hang out in the community room like I normally do, but uh, didn't want to do a digital talk, but it looks like a really good lineup if you're willing to hang out there. They're also basing it on Matrix this year. Um, so the the IRC alternative um, chat platform that's open source as well, if you're looking for where to hang out. Yeah, I, I think they're still having stands, but it'll be challenging because it's all gonna be in European time zone if you're in the US. So yeah, I, I don't know how much I can, how much time I'll be able to devote to hanging out in like a dev rooms because it might be in the middle of the night here. But do we want do we want to have a more of a thing? Is that an option? Like, is that something we should have done or should be doing? I know last year we tried to get a uh, a booth. I don't know if that's something we want to continue trying to do or uh... the deadline may have passed. I'm oh, just I'm sure. double checking. Yeah. I mean, they, I know for a lot of the dev rooms, they extended the deadline because I assumed they weren't getting a lot of submissions. Um, my last booth experience was not awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in conference, virtual conferences I've been to, like this, like the booths and stands aren't ideal, like virtually. But I'm not sure if we're really losing anything by not having a presence, like in terms of stands. Saying that it's not ideal, Ray is putting it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. 
<laughs> I did some booth duty too. I would yeah. really suggest everybody to go as far <laughs> from being signed up to anything like that as they can. <laughs> Not a good experience virtually, unfortunately. Not sure it's worth the time and effort to try to set it up even. It, it isn't, it will, you know, when I consider the spend that I did with all of my people and all the time we spent and all those different things for the hundred or so people that we had actually show up and, you know, most of them not even being real, it was, you know, thousands of dollars per person that showed up and it's just like, no, we're not, we're not doing that until I see something very significant change. Yeah. It's that ROI, man. Sorry. Sorry to be the businessy person, but the ROI is not there. <laughs> so, I mean, really is not. I, mean okay. I personally wouldn't even just um, like offer my time for most of the events. Maybe FOSDEM is different because of the audience is slightly different, but I'm not sure that will help with the booth. So Sorry, the, deadline, the deadline yeah. was 25th anyways, so we missed it, <laughs> luckily. So I just wanted to mention, um, Dean I Bajing has submitted for a stand at Foston, um, and we have uh, we're waiting to hear back on that. Just to mention, <laughs> but uh, I, we will be doing that as um, as well as we can. Well, I guess I'll. Yeah, I was just going to add on the DNI badging. The DNI badging program got their se second application which is uh, great. So they've badged one event and they're in the process um, of badging a second event. So I know Ruth is part of that. So thanks Ruth. And Nicole has also done some outreach with some, I think their events in Portland, is that right, Nicole? And also uh, with Angela at the Linux Foundation who has um, expressed keen interest in, in also participating so that, I guess over the break and since, since December, there's been some really nice progress in the, in the badging effort. So good job to everybody who is involved in that. I know that's not an event, but. <laughs> no, but it, it's good to see the progress there and um, hoping for more in this new year, so. Okay, what else? We have about 11 minutes left. Anything else that we wanna talk about? Is anyone doing any interesting measurement of their community? Like um, any use cases or observations on metrics being applied in, in new ways or even not new ways that you're remembering now that you're back? I might have an answer for you in like two months. I'll take it. <laughs> well, it's like this is finally a year closed out. We'll start looking at last year's data. So I think that there's going to be a lot of interesting conjectures as to what we thought was important. And then having a every our entire world's getting turned upside down and that will reevaluate what and how we find that important and what is actually important to measure, given that say something like contribution, volume and activity is now something that's less important knowing that there's a lot more unpredictability and motivation and behavior. So trying to tease out what actually is interesting to look at knowing that everything is gonna be kind of crazy. So I've set aside a couple of weeks over the next few months to go through our 2020 data, um, both internal and external which will culminate in some sort of public blog post, but ideally there will also be learning. So I will get back to you. I love that. If you ever want to side brainstorm, I would listen to that in a heartbeat. Thank you. Uh, it's probably it's probably worth putting the uh, metrics release on your radar. So we're still uh, a few months out. I think the the target is is March, but keep in mind that. Uh, that's going to include a, a 30 day review period. So for the working groups trying to get metrics out the door in time for this release, you, you really only have 
about a month. Uh, so additionally, we may need extra volunteers for the release uh, this time around because we are, uh, we're going to be releasing the, the metrics in, uh, I believe, Spanish and possibly Chinese as well. Yep. So uh, there are some logistics around that that uh, we could probably use some help uh, solving some of those problems. So. so at the moment, all of the current set of metrics have been translated to Spanish and Chinese. So it's really just any new metrics since the translation was done in December plus any like small modifications that have occurred to any of the metrics that were originally translated. So it's uh, probably not a, a ton of work. So we, we, did, we essentially did the large part of the translation earlier or late in 2020. And we're gonna be releasing, just so people know, I think Kevin, this is right. We're gonna be releasing the Chinese and the Spanish translations just as a PDF. So the uh, web page will be in English, correct? And then, okay. The web page will be in English, and then we will have three versions of the PDF that can be downloaded: uh, an English version, a Spanish version, and a and a Chinese version. Uh, so, uh, usually Georg and I manage the release, uh, and if if anyone is interested in in helping with that, uh, just please reach out. Any other questions on that for Kevin? All right, well, I guess we're, we're done. <laughs> we, we talked about everything there was to talk about. Go, go us. Um, six minutes left even. So mm -hmm. everyone have a wonderful day and yes, a wonderful too. rest of your week. And we will see you all at some point, either later this week or next week for sure. So thanks everybody right. for coming. Even Bye, though you everyone. didn't want to. See everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye.